Good evening, everyone. I want to welcome uh, all of you here uh, this evening and to those who are also watching us live uh, and give us really special welcome to our 14 Humphrey Fellows who are here today. And you all were selected as part of a highly competitive process uh, to spend almost a year with us here at the Walter Cronkite School to advance your careers in journalism and communications. I think that there could be no more noble effort, no more important effort, no effort that could be more important than that at this particular time. I wanna also give a special thanks to the International Institute of Education's Humphrey Fellowship Director, Dr. Peter Moran, who traveled here from Washington, D.C. to formally welcome you all as fellows. You'll be hearing from Dr. Moran earlier I and mean, later. Uh, I had a chance to speak with him a little bit earlier today, and we had a very engaging discussion about the program and, and just the opportunity to really serve on a, on a global and international level. And so I'm really excited. You know, Peter, thank you for, for being here with us today. <clears throat> this is the 12th cohort at the Cronkite School for the Humphrey Fellows Program. <clears throat> and I'm proud to say that we are the only journalism school to host a Humphrey Fellowship Program. And we are honored to serve in this role. And we understand how important it is to provide the fellows, IIE and the Department of the State with the best possible implementation of the program. And that's exactly why we have committed to staffing this program the way that it needs to be to support you all as part of this experience. And that also includes working with our Cronkite Global Initiatives Program and our director, Dr. Juan Mundell, who you will hear from after me, and Humphrey cur Curator and Professor, Dr. John, um, I'm, John, I'm giving you a doctorate again, John Meisner. We're gonna put John on the tenure track. <laughs> Uh, then per, uh, Professor Marianne Barrett, Dr. Marianne Barrett, and Program Manager Jan, Jan Holland. I want to thank all of you all who work with us here at Cronkite to make this program possible. I know the work that you all put in day to day and the commitment to this. You know, we have a very fine group of people who are committed to the Humphrey Fellowship Program and, and really work on this year round. And so that's what really makes this special. That's why this is a point of pride for us. And so thank you for your commitment. It is my honor to have joined the, uh, the Cronkite School as Dean just a few months ago. And I'm committed to building on the school's success through a program that we have referred to as Cronkite 2.0. This school has come a long way in the course of the past decade or so. And it, it is clear that Cronkite is one of the best, if not the best, journalism school in the nation. Cronkite 2.0 is all about how do we, where do we go from here? How do we leverage the momentum, the resources, the talent that we have within Cronkite and our community to help to serve on a global level? We're Go, embarking on that process through a model that has been referred to as the quadrants model. And that's a model we, de we developed to analyze where we are at Cronkite and where we want to go. This helps us to establish what our priorities are and how we want to align resources against those priorities. The quadrants are experience, expertise, access, and advancement. Let me give you a little bit of a uh, understanding for what those quadrants are about. In experience, we want to ensure that everyone who comes into contact with the Cronkite School, that they have a warm and welcome and inspiring experience. Fellows, I hope that you are, all are having such an experience here now with Cronkite. You all have been here for a few weeks. You've, you know, you've had an opportunity to engage with each other and engage with our faculty and some of our other students who are here. My hope is, is that you're having the type of experience that we would want you to have at Cronkite. 
expertise, that essentially deals with our thought leadership. For the Humphrey Fellowship, we expect a sharing of best practices from the, from the fellows home countries, as well as the curriculum that we teach here. Access deals with giving more people more access to our programs. The Humphrey Fellowship is a wonderful example of this priority as we give you access to our faculty and staff as fellows. And lastly, advancement. Advancement, and in this case, our goal is to share our vision globally so that when the fellows return home, they are better prepared to serve their communities through their work in journalism and in communication. The Humphrey Program is the centerpiece of the Cronkite Global Initiatives Unit and our international work. And we believe that we, and, and we have big plans to grow Cronkite Global and ideally with the help of the fellows you'll be hearing from later today. Again, I wanna thank you for coming to the Cronkite School for today's ceremony. And I would like to now introduce Dr. Juan Mundell. Well, hello everyone, welcome. Um, again, my name is Juan Mundell. I'm the new Cronkite Global Initiatives Director. And it's my pleasure to welcome you all to this inaugural ceremony. Um, as the Dean mentioned, um, I have a very specific task to do here at Cronkite and at the ESU. And in these two months that I've been here, we've engaged with a number of partners and we have grown our initiatives really quickly. So among the things that we've been working on are semester long study abroad programs, internships abroad, faculty led short term study abroad programs, we're also taking a look at virtual collaboration between universities, faculty research, and doctoral student research, um, and also grants that allow us to really take the Cronkite footprint into other countries and lend our expertise to work with local communities. So we have a really challenging but exciting task ahead. And as these fellows return back home, I hope that we're going to continue working together to continue developing the relationships with Cronkite. Um, being in this position for me, it's an honor. I came here as an exchange student in 2008. And if it weren't because of the graciousness of my American hosts, perhaps I wouldn't be here today. So it is my absolute pressure now to actually retribute the favor to uh, these fellows. And I really look forward to developing long lasting relationships with each and every one of them. Um, and my remarks are short, but I just wanna thank the entire uh, Cronkite Global Initiatives team for everything that they do to make sure that the fellows are taken care of while they're here. Um, and right before I leave the stage, I just want to introduce uh, the fellows uh, video that they've put together to introduce their experience here at ASU and at Cronkite. Um, so if we're ready to show the video, then I'll step up. Um, thank you everyone for being here and thank you to our global friends and families as well for making sure that the fellows feel welcome in the US. Thank you. Two, one. Hold on. Okay. Is it looking too oily? No. no it's fine. It's okay. okay. Let's I start. Know, Let's start. Three, two, one, go. সবাইকে অনেক অনেক শুভেচ্ছা আমার নাম এলিটা আমি বাংলাদেশ থেকে এসেছি আমি একজন সাংবাদিক এবং সংগীত শিল্পী আমি এখানে এসেছি শিখতে জানতে এবং সবার সাথে অনেক কিছু শেয়ার করতে 
Balamu sisi zanyo basi wana wanyavo, amani yanzu Johnson Mayamba, gandi muna mole wa daily monitor ukuvaka mpala Uganda. Ndi wano mu America okuyiga engeri jamani ndobe jaba wano jaba kula mimi mlimu jaba na dala mukumbi ni sed engeli ya dembeli yangu tu muguanga. Меня зовут Милана Мазаева, я приехала из России, сама я из Чеченской Республики, я журналист русской службы BBC, также я Digital Field Producer. И здесь я для того, чтобы стать хорошим лидером и научиться делать документальное кино. Yeah. Hi, my name is Andrea Polanco and I'm from Belize. I'm an award-winning trained broadcast journalist with a passion for climate change, conservation and by extension environmental stories. I'm here because I'm seeking professional development to transition into a new chapter in my career. Una kusheo, Mina asked me about we come on Sierra Leone. I work for the Sierra Leone Broadcasting Corporation as a television presenter. And also, I know say Mina the Secretary General of the Sierra Leone Association of Journalists. I then I also for take part from the Humphrey Fellowship, we then call it the Hubert Humphrey Fellowship. Dajahawajawsichiwalaizajungwa Assalamu alaikum, my name is Hanif and my name is Pakistan. With our senior associate producer, I have covered the issues of science, science, and science, and other issues. In the Humphrey program, I have the opportunity to get rid of my money, and the opportunity to get rid of my money, and the opportunity to get rid of my money. Hello, I'm Yuan Tech. I'm from the United States. I've been working in the United States in the United States. 이곳에 온 이유는 미국의 지역 신문 현장을 공부하기 위해서 왔습니다. 예! 퍼션데티아. 에므림 어스테 리라 창가. 온 빙가 시프리아. 온냠 니 가자타레 데즈빌루에세 메디아스 노 벤딩 쿠에토이. 온냠 쿠투 셉세 도쉬로이토 무소이 무숨 리도 메 베리티키미 네 팍타베 데 두아 지타슈 투 퍼미르소이 아프토시테 미아노 푸션 아카데미케. Okay, so this, hey, hey guys, this is going to be yeah, a good one. Yeah, okay. and look it until you finish. Three minutes. Just come to three, then move your eyes. One, two, three. Uh, what is the. See us talk, Fabo Berlin for the Major or Sairo, Ushagi Rock and Dogos and Gaza Shaggy Focus Su Hill Magazine. Na. The sheet of the two Shaggy Dash for Octoroni, as if you get a job on Magish Mary America, they show you where as a magam. مرحبا السلام عليكم أنا تسنيم عبر من الأراضي الفلسطينية صحفية وإعلامية لأكثر من 18 سنة اجيت على هيوبرت همفري لتطوير مهارات الإعلامية والأكاديمية في مجال الإعلام بتمنى الكل يحصل على هاي الفرصة لتطوير مهاراته أوكي 3 2 1 كيو Hola a todos, mi nombre es Ángela Aurora, soy profesora en la Universidad de El Salvador. Mi trabajo me permite innovar en diferentes áreas de la educación superior. Uno de mis principales logros es haber creado el primer programa de doctorado en mi universidad. Estoy aquí en ASU porque quiero ayudar a crear nuevas herramientas de trabajo para mis estudiantes. Hi, Hanna es mi adoc, Ana uh, Minjeneva Sudán. وأنا صافي أنا في أمريكا إني ندرس الصحفي في أريزونا ستيت يونيفرسيتي وأنا إني مع زملاء الكثير في العالم نحن مفصولين جدا عشان يكون إني وعشان نحمل التغيرات بس لما نرجع في بلدنا بعدين يكون في تغيرات at least يعني شكرا. I am a Humphrey Fellow. I am a Humphrey Fellow. I am a Humphrey Fellow. We are Humphrey Fellows. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, let's do it. Three, two. I'm a I am a Humphrey Fellow. Humphrey fellow. We, we are Humphrey, Humphrey fellows. fellows. Three. I am three. Look to camera. 
I am a sorry, I'm sorry. I am a Humphrey Fellow. We are Humphrey Fellows. <laughs> Say it three, one, two, one, cue. I'm a Humphrey Fellow and we are Humphrey Fellows. Good. That was good. Thank you. I am Humphrey Fellow. I'm a Humphrey Fellow. We, we are, Humphrey, are Fellows. Humphrey Fellows. Friends, is your friend. Okay, it's my friend. friend. The camera. You? Okay. I am Humphrey Fellow. We are Humphrey Fellows. <laughs> I'm Hello, everybody. <laughs> oh, boy. As you can tell from the video, this group likes, likes to have a bit of fun, and uh, that was all produced and, and directed by them, so thank you. Uh, the early indications are, and this is our 12th group, as the Dean mentioned, uh, that this is a very cohesive and memorable group, and they're going to have a, a great time during the year that they, they have with us. Um, you're going to meet the fellows shortly uh, and hear directly from, from them, but first I'd like to share my experience as a Humphrey professor. After my career in broadcast newspaper and digital journalism, it was my privilege to join ASU and the Cronkite School five years ago. I have, a, I have a variety of responsibilities at ASU in the school, but my favorite role is teaching the Humphrey Seminar uh, and more recently working as a program curator, uh, succeeding uh, Dr. Bill Silcock, who retired. This is my sixth cohort, and every year when I learn about the incoming students' home countries, I play a fun game. I go to uh, a world map in my home office, and I try to find their countries, and some of them are easier than others. But eventually, I put the little pins on the map and I see where everybody is, is coming from. Um, and at that point, it seems like these are far away places and very different kinds of people and cultures. But once they get here, that dynamic changes. And we understand that we have a common theme, and that is regardless of where we live and work, we ideally all have a sense of purpose. And I will tell you that this cohort has a sense of purpose. More specifically, they have a drive to learn so much so that when they return home, they are better equipped to leverage their professional savvy to make their communities better places to live, regardless of the country or the continent. In addition to the skills classes they are able to attend, the weekly Humphrey seminar is the cornerstone of their Humphrey experience. Dr. Mary Ann Barrett is my teaching partner with the seminar. And I know Marianne will confirm that we arguably learn at least as much as we teach in that seminar as these professionals from journalism and strategic communication share their working experiences and their aspirations and their challenges. Our goal each week is to teach strategies and tactics to help the fellows grow their individual effectiveness and to also help them involve into more effective leaders in group settings as we recognize that nobody in business does it alone. To accomplish these goals, we put the fellows through a rigorous curriculum of case studies, books, other readings, group exercises, current events, and news coverage of, of those events as we prepare the students to return home to be more effective leaders at their organizations, or in some cases, to launch their own businesses. And remember, for most of them, English is their second or third or fourth language. And we don't cut them any slack at all. <laughs> it's a graduate level program and uh, so far so good during our 12 years. Also, the Humphrey program is not just about the classroom. As you saw in the video, they've quickly bonded into a group that respects one another, but also likes to have some fun. And just as in the workplace, we put a premium on social time because it's in these situations when sharing and socializing transpire. And for example, when a fellow from one region helps another solve a problem or simply offers advice, very early tomorrow morning, as in 5.50 a.m., we are getting on a bus to go to the Grand Canyon. So the fellows get to see a, a wonder of the world, as long as they're there at 5.50 a.m., <laughs> and they don't have to follow us on Facebook Live. Um, and there's going to be a lot of time to bond and share stories and and have fun. Um, 
And I know that along the way, sometime tomorrow or the next day, there will be aha moments, lifetime memories, as we all spend time together and, and uh, um, blend even more than we already have. The Humphrey program is made possible not only by the State Department grant and IIE's wonderful support, but also by generous donors. And you get to meet one today. Dr. Adelaida Severson and her husband, Barry, have joined us. They are founders of Bushtex, a global satellite communi communications company. They are also generous donors to the Cronkite School with a gift that prompted us to name the Humphrey Suite in their names. So we invited Adelaide to speak here today, and I want to let you know a little bit about her background. She has too many accomplishments to list today, but the short version is she earned her bachelor's degree at USC, her master's and PhD here at ASU. She was also the 2017 Cronkite School Alumni Hall of Fame honoree. It was named by Arizona Business Magazine as one of Arizona's most influential women. She's also an ASU trustee. Her background includes public relations, broadcast journalism, marketing, events management, philanthropy and satellite communications. Adelaide is always a popular guest lecturer because of her life story and her professional successes. And will soon be speaking to this Humphrey cohort. There's a lot more I could say, more tributes I could give to Adelaide, but in the interest of time, I'm just gonna invite her up here so you can hear from, your, from her yourself. Please welcome Dr. Adelaide Severson. Well, thanks, John. I appreciate that. And welcome, everybody. Good afternoon. So what I'd like to do, however, before I start, I wanted to greet each and every one of you so I know who you are and try to do it in your native tongue. <laughs> but if I don't pronounce it correctly, you can bug me later. So where's Tasmin from the West Bank? Assalamu alaikum. Angela from El Salvador. Bienvenido. Atok from South Sudan. Ah, oh, there you are. Okay. Ahlan wa sahalan. Mohammed from Sierra Leone. Mohammed. Kushe Odibodi. <laughs> Johnson from Uganda. Jebaliko. Okay. <laughs> Elira from Albania. Ah, there you are. Persian Detje Mir. Savini, okay. Balint from Hungary. <laughs> Udvo Zoljuk. Okay. <laughs> Anum from Pakistan. Ah, they're nice green. Kusham Adid. Elita from Bangladesh. Namaskar. Shah Guto. <laughs> Gyo and Hunteg from South Korea. Won Yong Hana, Milana from Russia, Dabro Pashalabet, Andrea from Belize. I don't know if this is correct, but it's kind of Creole. Wedigua, <laughs> bienvenido. Uh, and Sishi from China, Wan Ying. <laughs> okay, I hope I did okay. I didn't want to start any wars or anything. <laughs> But truly, it's my great pleasure because, um, you know, you all have come so far and I want to congratulate you for being here. Um, last year, uh, the cohort was nine people or nine fellows and there was only one woman or one guy, one man. So this is nice to see a balance. Um, and it's such a bright spot in my life this time of year to greet all of you. Um, because each year brings all of you professionals, a diverse group of professionals from different countries and different cultures, all eager to learn about our media and our journalism, as much as we are eager to learn about all of you. You each bring a different perspective of journalism and the media, and this journey is as meaningful to you as it is to us. And what better place to do it than ASU's Walter Cronkite School, right? I came to the Cronkite School in 1994, wanting to pursue a master in mass communications. I was already a professional in the field, but wanted to hone in my skills a little bit further. 
And in some ways, I think I was following in my mother's footsteps. So I was born in Honolulu, Hawaii, and my mother was a broadcaster. She was originally from the Philippines and was a pianist, a singer, and an entertainer there. After receiving her master's in music, she wanted to get to the United States and kind of did sort of something like you did. She enrolled in a broadcasting school in Washington, DC. Now, back then in the 1950s, she was probably, I think she was the only woman um, out of 25 men <laughs> that were studying. And uh, if you can imagine a five foot three Filipino lady with a thick accent trying to learn the English language and broadcasting in the United States. But upon graduation, she was hired by a radio station in Hawaii. Uh, there were a lot of Filipinos in Hawaii that were working in the plantations, uh, the pineapple plantations. And because she spoke the Ilocano dialect, she was hired right away. She was perfect for the job. And she was able to play the piano on the radio while singing uh, the Filipino folk songs that made them feel right at home. So while growing up, I would watch how my mother would do her shows from the broadcast station, as well as from home, even back then, giving the news while engaging her listeners to get involved with the community. Now that I think of it, I think mom was one of the first social media influencers. <laughs> so I remember thinking to myself, I wanted to be just like her, you know, a journalist who was able to tell stories and be able to affect and effect people to be engaged in the community and world events. So upon graduating the University of Southern California, I became a reporter for a small station. But while I was there, editing the news, writing the news, being the camera person, I, it wasn't quite what I thought it would be. I remember going and being called to cover a fire. And when I was in the car, I was sitting trying to write the story, I remember sitting there th thinking, gosh, people are dying in that building. And here I was worried about our, our station ratings to be the first one on site to get the scoop and to get B-roll of this wonderful burning building. Where were my priorities, right? So as if it were divine intervention, I ran into an old friend who also went to USC and he was starting a satellite communications company. And this was in the 1980s. And he asked if I would be interested in working for him. He knew I had a degree in broadcast journalism and international relations. So it would be a perfect fit for his new uh, department of his company. So I took a leap of faith and joined him. Knew nothing about satellite communications at all. And then that's where I met my future husband, Barry. It was at that job that I learned about satellite communications being behind the camera and understanding the far reaches of broadcast internationally. So Barry and I ended up leaving that company. We got married, obviously, and we thought we could probably do what they do, but we do it on our own. And that's where life got interesting. We moved here to Arizona. Barry decided to freelance for the networks, his first gig being the first Gulf War in 1991. So yes, that's how old we are <laughs> for CBS. And then from there covering high conflict areas around the world that were falling away from communism. I, on the other hand, moving from California, making this wonderful salary, wasn't able to find a job here in Arizona that matched. So I decided to go back to school. And this is where I landed. Well, not really. I mean, I, I don't know if any of you have been to the main campus yet, um, but Stauffer Hall on the main campus is where the Cronkite School was born. And all of my classes were in the basement. So you guys, this is a palace compared to what we had. <laughs> so congratulations and take advantage of it. But while I was getting my degree, I ended up getting hired by the president's office here at ASU. And I was a director of special events, which meant really I was the president's friend raiser uh, for the university. I planned his events and worked with the public relations team. And so it was quite the turn of events, but it was also the time that Barry and I decided to start a family. Oh, by the way, in the meantime, I was getting my doctorate. And then when I was ABD, which means all but dissertation, I was pregnant with twins. <laughs> so all of this while going to ASU. But as the, de the demand for what we did 
as satellite communications grew, we decided to concentrate on building our company, Bush Techs Incorporated. And the name, by the way, comes from the fact that we were in the bush uh, doing communications remotely. So the bush, and then you've got the text, which is T-E-X, which is more of a sexier way to be T-C-H-S on a logo. <laughs> so it's like bush text. So you kind of get that. But we were hired uh, to do international events, like supporting broadcasts for the Olympics and other high profile events going on around the world. In fact, Barry just got back from 60 days and being in Tokyo covering the Olympics, both the Paras and the, um, the regular Olympics, I guess. So next thing you know, in our company, we started getting government contracts and the military outlets were really interested in not using our services. And it's funny because we hardly do any business here in Arizona. All of our work is done out of state and out of country. So we started that business 25 years ago out of our garage. So we basically went from garage to global <laughs> and we got ourselves um, a space because we were working out of our home. And I'm happy to say that um, after being in this one space for about 10 years, last year we decided to build a building um, because we've grown so much. And this Friday is our grand opening for that building. Now, I tell you this story because as you embark on this Humphrey year, it is important for you to concentrate on you and what you want to accomplish and become. My journey had many twists and turns, as you see, because there were so many decisions I had to make as a woman, as a wife, as a professional, and eventually as a mother. I wanted to be a broadcast journalist like my mom, and now I am a CEO of a satellite communications company that does business internationally. What? <laughs> when did that happen, right? So Hubert Humphrey himself once said, you can always debate about what you have, should have done. The question is, what are you going to do? So as you go through your journey here at the Cronkite School in the Humphrey Fellowship Program, I would like to challenge you to think about a couple of things. One, what do I bring as a new fellow from my background in leadership and in the media to, my, to help my cohort and to help the Cronkite School? You are here to learn, but to also share your views, your perspectives, your experiences, and your opinions. Because if you don't, and don't be afraid to do so, because that's the only way you can have great discourse and learn from each other. Number two, where can I go to improve my own leadership abilities and capacities? You are here at Arizona State University just named for the seventh year in a row, the number one innovative university. It's a research one university. There's so many accolades that come with being here at ASU. And so it, it's a research one university filled with academicians who are willing to help. And just here in the Cronkite School alone, you not only have those academics who are brilliant and smart, but they've worked in the craft in their perspective fields. So seek them out, take advantage of their knowledge and wisdom. And three, where can I find role models and mentors? And how might I be able to do that? The Cronkite School is filled <laughs> with connections and networks of alumni and professional partnerships. Now, so that's an easy one. It's meaning you having to get that mentor. I know you all have been assigned one, but look beyond that as well. John Meisner, your curator, the program is a wonderful mentor. Use him. He's got tentacles that are far reaching in this business, in this broadcast community, um, far out and outside of Arizona. And at the end of the day, and all you do and learn here in America, you need to remember that you represent your country and your culture. You are an ambassador. You should be proud of your heritage. This is the start of a life-changing experience. Time will go very fast. So take advantage of every moment. Learn something new, do something new, and especially meet someone new. What will last are these friendships and these connections that you make. You are now a swath of a fabric of this wonderful community we call Arizona State University, Walter Cronkite School. 
add your unique piece to this ever growing canvas and this family. And think also about how you want to give back. Finally, I wanna leave you with this. One day, your life will flash before your eyes. Make sure it's worth watching. <laughs> so congratulations on being here. I wish all of you the best of luck and I'm looking forward to seeing you throughout the year. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming to welcome the 12th cohort of the Hubert H. Humphrey Fellows at Arizona State University. Uh, my name is Jan Holland Malcolm. I am the program manager of this program. This is my fifth cohort I've had the pleasure of working with. Um, I've been with the program here at Cronkite for four years, so do the math. I came, I came a half year and got, got a two for one deal um, in one year, had two cohorts. Um, this cohort brings 124 individuals from 64 countries to Arizona and to the Cronkite School over the last 12 years. So welcome. That's a really great, it's a really great group to be among. The Hubert H. Humphrey program is in its 42nd year. It was started in the late 1970s. I do the math, I think that's 78, by then President Jimmy Carter, who wanted to honor the late Hubert H. Humphrey for his lifetime of service, public service. And um, we still are here today. The Humphrey program gets about five to 6,000 individuals that apply from across the globe and only about 160 individuals from various professions are accepted every year. I was checking with Dr. Moran and he said there's about 95 countries represented in this year's cohort across the 13 host campuses. And at this particular campus, we have 13 of those 95 countries represented. But even though, as Dean Batta said, we currently are the only journalism and mass communication school that is a host campus of this program, we are in good hands because we have a wonderful support community, not only here at Arizona State University and the Cronkite School, but also within our Phoenix and Arizona communities. We have wonderful friends called Global Friends, and these are volunteers in our community who have decided to open their homes and open their hearts and open their car doors and go for road trips and adventures with the fellows and have a cultural exchange with them, um, learning a little bit about the fellows, life and culture, and then sharing about life here in Arizona and the United States. And from what I understand from the global friends that we've had that have returned year after year after year, they continue those relationships with those fellows. And when they're lucky enough, when it's not the pandemic, they meet up and they travel with them overseas. Another really wonderful support in our group are the academic mentors. These are Cronkite faculty that actually volunteer to be connected with um, one of the Humphrey Fellows and support them in whatever their um, goals are for, for themselves during their Humphrey experience. And then of course, here in the Cronkite School, we probably have the best staff and faculty around and the student body, especially the ones as, as they move through the years and they learn about the Humphrey Fellows, they get to experience having them in classes and it's just a really wonderful experience. So I've kept you all waiting long enough. I would like to introduce the first of our 14 fellows. They're going to say some very brief remarks. So it is my pleasure to welcome to the stage, Andrea from Belize.
Buy ti rama wenyu. Buenas tardes. Dios. That's good afternoon from where I come from. My name is Andrea Polanco. I'm a television news reporter from Belize, a small culturally rich country that has a dual identity of being Central American and Caribbean. We have the second largest barrier reef in the world. We have pristine rich forests, but these economically and ecologically important resources are at risk. Why do I say this? Because Belize, when we look at the contributions of the GHGs in terms of the global emissions, it's so negligible. Yet, as a small country, there is very little that we can do to mitigate global climate change. And I say this because we are such a small country, but there's so much that we have to offer to the world. And as we are a small country, Sadly, we're so vulnerable and easily affected by climate change. I am here at the Walter Cronkite School of Media and School of Journalism and Mass Communication because I want to move forward in my career to produce content about climate change, about conservation, about sustainability and wider environmental issues. Why? Because communication is such a critical role to engage people and to provoke action. And so today I want to make, to, I want to make a call to action. I want to challenge us who are here to make the changes in our daily lives, to demand more from our cities, from our corporations, from our government to take climate action. And if there's one thing I want you to take from my message today, it's that we can make a difference. Climate change is real. Climate change is now. Climate change affects the very way of life as we know it. So what will you do about it? What will you do about it? What will you do about it? What? Will we do about it? Thank you. I want to welcome my friend and colleague, Elira Kanga from Albania. Thank you, Andrea. My name is Elira Changa, and I come from a small but amazing country in the Southeastern Europe, Albania. You might want to visit and I will invite you to visit this country for its wonderful, amazing sites, for the seaside, for the mountains, but more than everything, for the hospitality and the human spirit it has. I've been a journalist for 10 years, almost 10 years in my life, and I've been working for newspapers, for television and radio in my country. And during the last 10 years, I've been working as a media project manager and media developer supporting young reporters and transforming the public service media in Albania, supporting quality reporting and establishing the first fact-checking initiative in my country. Being in this program has been my dream forever since the beginning of my career. But early enough, I dived into journalism in a very challenging environment, media environment in my country, as Albania was and still is. Albania was coming from 50 years of communism, isolation, and so there were so many challenges in that. Then this profession, you all know how it captures you and uh, flies with you. And I never had a moment to stop and think, how can I improve myself or my skills during uh, my career? Uh, back at that time, I would have never known that I would get this opportunity 20 years after I started my career in journalism with a certain experience, 20 years on my shoulders, and three kids that are here with me in this wonderful journey. Well, life surprises us in so many ways, and I'm grateful to be in this program. This program, I don't know if this will totally change my life, but it has certainly changed my perspective. It introduced me to amazing professors and instructors, it has given me a very practical teaching methods to observe and that I can use in my country back. And more than everything, it gave me great colleagues, amazing friendship, which I will cherish for life. I believe this is one of the best times on my, in my life and I look forward to enjoy every moment of it. Thank you. And I'd like to introduce now my colleague, Ato from South Sudan.
uh, in South Sudan, where I come from, uh, we are tribe. And as tribe, we don't have a common language. So we embrace Arabic. And if you meet a South Sudanese who is a stranger to you, you, you talk to it Arabic. So I'll greet you. Misal khairukum. Okay. Thank you. Uh, anyway, in 1978, when this program was founded, in the year I was born, today, as I stand here, this program is 78, is 43 years, and I am as well 43 years. What a coincidence. Look at that. Uh, I talk my name, I come from South Sudan. South Sudan may not be familiar to some of you. We are in East Africa. And South Sudan has four unique things that we normally claim and allege to. One, South Sudan, where I come from, is the world's youngest country. It got independent in a referendum in 2011. After the people of South Sudan struggled for over half a century, for independence, that's one. Two, South Sudan is the country with the tallest people in the world. Uh, you, must have, you might have known of Laid Manut Ball, he used to play for NBA. His son, the Ball Junior, plays for NBA today. He's putting on the same number that his late dad used to put on. Uh, South Sudan, that got independent in 2011 also had its founding father, late Dr. John Garang, he studied here in America. He had his degree, master's degree and a PhD in Iowa State University. And with me born in 1978 under the same Humphrey Fellowship that was founded in 1978. Again, what a coincidence. Uh, South Sudan got independent years. The Americans supported us and we are so proud of it. But unfortunately, we are still not independent enough. There's one thing that is lacking, there's a independent where the flag is up. But then there's no independent, there's no freedom of speech. There's no freedom of media. Today, I as a journalist, sometimes watch things happening in my country. There are things that I can say because there is no freedom of speech. There's no freedom of media. My fellow journalists and media practitioners, most of them have left the country. Some of them have gone to exile. Some of them even have left the career. They, are, they have chosen different way of life in order to protect their own life. I'm coming here to advocate for the freedom of media, the freedom of speech, which is instrumental in, in, in life of humanity. If human being can fix up their mind, if they cannot say what they feel about, if they cannot cheer their creativity with the world, among themselves, it's nothing. I, I, and I think this country is, 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 is one of the greatest countries simply because is that people are able to speak their mind. They can say what they know, what they feel, and how they feel about themselves and how they feel about their future. So uh, anyway, uh, South Sudan, where I come from, has the highest illiteracy rate in the world with 72% illiteracy rate, imagine in this century, with the women only 8% literacy rate. This is the country where I come from. And this is why I am so much interested to be here today, to share this experience and to learn. So by the time I get back from here, I would be able to make some impact. Thank you. Atok has too many things to say. <laughs> yes, uh, my name is Guy Hilk Lee. I'm from Seoul, South Korea, uh, the country of BTS or movie Parasite, <laughs> Osai Gangnam Style, sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm a TV journalist uh, working for JTBC, which is one of the biggest uh, TV stations in South Korea. And um, uh, for the past two years, I was a fact checker in my newsroom and leader of Team Fact Check. So I hosted a daily segment in my 
uh, prime time news. So it was tough walk. So that's why I'm here. I, <laughs> I really want to enjoy this uh, brief culture. So I don't have enough time, I know. So uh, I have a question, short question. Uh, can I say we here are friends? We are friends, right? So I'd like to, uh, let me to, let me do this uh, for uh, finish my speech, my turn. I know you are familiar with this song. Keep smiling, keep shining, knowing you can always count on me for sure. That's what friends are for. For good time, for bad time, I'll be on your side forevermore. That's what friends are for. And I think that's what Humphrey Fellows are for, right? Thank you. And I'd like to, my friend, introduce my friend, Si Chi from China. Thank you, Gai Ho. Uh, beautiful song. I'm Si Chi Yao. I'm from China. Hello, everyone. Uh, I focus uh, I focus on international affairs, uh, like uh, manufacturing shifts globally and Asia Pacific region. And I'm dedicated to providing my Chinese readers with impartial stories on foreign countries. Uh, the worldview helps me broaden my horizon and open my mind. Uh, last year, I think all people in the world have been suffering extreme pressure because of the pandemic. Uh, I think the most important thing I did last year was to apply Humphrey Fellowship Program. I really appreciate to have the opportunity to be here to learn from you all. Um, when I came here, what impressed me most about ASU is the wealthy learning resources, supports and encouragements for whatever we want to learn. And I'd like to share my expectations about my Humphrey year. Firstly, uh, I'm so excited to go back to school after seven years working time. Um, so I'm ready to embrace American value, American culture, and the new people, new challenges, and every delightful and frustrated moment here. Secondly, uh, I, I'd like to communicate with professors to about about my interested area and to see their deep insights finally in my opinion the most important thing is keep thinking keep learning and keep experiencing thank you very much uh now let me introduce my friend tech from but also from south korea thank you Thank you for introducing me, Suchi. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Hyun-Tech Lee from South Korea. Just call me Tech. Um, I'm newspaper journalist in my country. Uh, with uh, mentoring from Professor Julia Wallace, I'm researching for the way for Korean newspapers to survive in the era of digital transformation. Before coming here, I was a little afraid of coming back to university and studying in my mid-career age. But I can have a kind of winning attitude because of two uh, more mentors. One is uh, my newspaper's supervisor, Jisop Jung, who will uh, watch me through YouTube or RSVP virtually. And the second, Mentor is Professor Lynn Marshall Carter. Uh, she encouraged me to uh, not to lose my courage and study again. Thank you. After I come back to my country, I am planning to write a book with the memory of this Cronkite School. The name is Cradle of Innovation Cronkite School. Thank you. And now I will introduce my fellow and friend, Mohamed Asmiupa from Sierra Leone. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, my brother. Um, Dr. Batz, the Dean of um, Walter Conquer School of Journalism and Mass Communication, Director of the HHH Fellowship, 
fellows, our mentors, global friends, and students permit me to stand on existing protocols. I am Mohamed Asmiuba from Sierra Leone in West Africa. I work for the Sierra Leone Broadcasting Corporation as a television anchor and also the National Secretary General of the Sierra Leone Association of Journalists. Coming to the US as a Humphrey Fellow is a turning point in my career path. Being here, my life is not only going to be shaped, but it is also going to be a new dawn. My returning, I assure you, will be different from the time I arrived three months ago. All my working life has been in the newsroom to report on issues and events. And I had that passion to come and learn pure journalism. But upon my arrival and mentoring at ASU, I realized I must have a shift. The reason I decided to choose writing for public relations as one of my modules. Upon my return, I want to be not only a better media practitioner, but a public relations professional as well. Classes have been great, and believe me, I have learned things I never knew. As a Humphrey Fellow, I am looking forward to learning more about the American culture, governance, and politics. My country has pristine beaches, beautiful lakes, lush mountains, sunny weather like Arizona, and finally, we are one of the most religious tolerance country in the world. Thanks to the American people and government for this wonderful opportunity that money cannot give you, influence cannot give you. I want to say once more, I am going to learn, and when I return, I become a better person than I came. Thank you very much. I want to introduce my sister from Palestine, um, Tasneem from the West Bank. Thank you very much. Hello, marhaba. This is Tasneem from Palestine. John, actually, as a, an expert in media and TV production, asked us to train, to practice, to practice, practice for this 19, 90 second of the speech. But in my opinion, I actually, I want to absorb this moment. I want to experience it by myself. Being here just a few weeks ago, we've been in our countries, sitting in our rooms, doing remotely things related to our jobs or our lives, and doing my master's degree with four kids. <laughs> now I'm here in Walter Cronkite and ASU doing something will shift my career, my profession to another level. This is actually will provide my, and this is actually for the first time the, uh, I came from Palestine and uh, some women or journalists came to uh, Walter Cronkite. I think this opportunity is uh, amazing for a woman from the conflict area. And we need many opportunity as this to enhance women in my country and to make them uh, upgrade their lives, upgrade their skills in journalism and media, especially they work in wars and being under attack. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me here. And I will, as the Dean uh, said, we will experience the three words, experience and uh, uh, access, and the other one I forget because I, <laughs> I passed the time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I introduce my friend Valent from Hungary. So hi, everyone. My name is Valent Fabok. I'm a journalist from Hungary. So let me start with an anecdote. Just four days after we arrived to Phoenix, my daughter, six-year-old daughter, she went to school. It couldn't have been more challenging, like a different continent, different time zone, uh, heat, no friends, and she couldn't speak in English. Of course, she was worried. She had many fears. She even cried before she entered the school. So did, so did I. I was so worried all, all day long. But when we went there to pick her up at the school, I couldn't be more surprised. She came out there with a big smile on her face saying, I want to stay here. And on the way back home, she even said that, I don't want to go back to Hungary for a year. I want to stay in the States. When I asked her, what happened? What did you like the most? She said, we got waffles for breakfast and later on potato chips and gummy bears. <laughs> so we don't give these things in Hungary in a school. Uh, I'm sharing this story because it completely reflects my feelings as well. 
Before I came here, I had many fears, but after I arrived, it, quick, it quickly changed. Why? The treatment. As my daughter experienced at the school with the sweets, I, I'm also amazed by the treatment we receive here. I met so many people and so far, almost all of them were extremely encouraging, supportive and positive. And this is not what I can experience in my country on a daily basis. So I just wanted to tell you that how grateful I am for this very encouraging environment. I get a big opportunity and now it's my turn to take it. So thank you so much. And let me introduce my friend from Bangladesh, Alita. Good evening, everybody. My name is Alita. I'm sorry, that was a little loud. <laughs> I'm from Bangladesh. I'm a journalist, I'm a singer, and I'm also a professional voice artist. When I arrived here a little more than a month ago, uh, it was past 10 p.m. at night, and I was welcomed by the late night heat. Um, I was filled with excitement and curiosity. Um, even though we are all settled in right now, uh, I speak for many of my friends and my fellows here uh, when I say that we are still very excited uh, to explore new beginnings, uh, and overwhelmed in a very good way, of course, with all the opportunities offered to us. Today, the Cronkite School has become a second home, especially the suite on the fourth floor that we can call our own. Other than the Humphrey Seminar taught by Dr. Uh, Marianne Barrett, I signed up for a very, very special course, the US Popular Music, Culture and Technology, taught by Dr. Christy J. Wells, and I'm really enjoying it. There is so much of Arizona that we need to experience. Tomorrow, the entire cohort will be visiting the Grand Canyon. Finally, I can ride back to my friends and colleagues back home with some proof of actually living in Arizona. Because in my country, Arizona is actually Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon is Arizona. That's how it is in many other countries. Thank you so much for this wonderful reception, making us feel, feel at home and taking out time to attend the event. I hope we will get to connect and talk more. I would now like to invite my colleague, Anam Hanif from Pakistan to share a few words. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alida. Hello, Assalamu alaikum, everyone. I'm Anam Hani from Pakistan. I have worked in various positions in a leading newspaper and television news channels in Pakistan. I belong to a country which sacrificed thousands in war against terrorism. I belong to a country where the youngest Nobel Prize laureate comes from. And I belong to a country which has beautiful landscapes and mesmerizing mountains. And if you love mountains, people, and food, you're going to love visiting Pakistan. It's an honor to be here at Arizona State University, as I know Cronkite School from earlier fellows and my professors at university, who told me that you're going to love that place and they were absolutely right. Let me share with you that I wake up every morning to do the most interesting thing I could ever imagine, contributing to the process of becoming voice of people. And besides strengthening my storytelling skills, I'm looking forward to exploring new places and cultures and making new connections with people in the United States and other countries through my fellow colleagues who belong to diverse backgrounds. I would like to tell you one more thing about me. I'm a person full of questions. I'm not sure if it's the effect of my profession or what, but I'm curious and ask a lot of questions. And if you find me asking questions from you, please don't get denied. Thank you. And I would like to introduce my friend Milana from Russia. Hello. Oh, wow. I'm just like almost the same. <laughs> so um, my name is Milana. I came from Russia. I was born and raised in Chechnya is the small region in south of Russia. And it was quite difficult to live in that place when I was young. Now you can live there 
peacefully, especially if you are not a woman and if you are not a woman journalist. I'm saying that because I went through a lot of things, difficult things to have opportunity to stay here in the front of you all. You know, when I was preparing this small uh, speech, I, I had a feeling that I'm preparing a Oscar winning uh, speech, you know. <laughs> and I was imagining like I'm saying something and then I'm taking this thing and I'm going from the stage. So, and uh, I just want to say to you that first time in my life here in Phoenix, I believe that very soon I will write my award speech because of you all, because of this program and because of this school. Thank you for that. And now I'm gonna give you a space for clapping. Thank you. And now I'm gonna introduce uh, our next fellow, uh, Angela Aurora from El Salvador. Thank you. I think I spend my time and only brief. So good evening. My name is Angela Aurora. I'm from El Salvador. And I teach journalism in El Salvador in the university. It's the unique institution, uh, higher education in my country. So I'm so glad to stay here uh, with you and meet amazing people from different cultures in different countries. I want to say thank you, Home Free Program, because they believe in my ideas and my project. I believe in education as a key for open mind. And I think my country needs more open mind. My students in El Salvador is my opportunity for create new opportunities. I really happy to stay here and meet uh, amazing people like you. All people let me uh, one experience and teach me different story. I learn more about how I can say my story because it's very important. And I understand here with uh, excellent teachers, excellent uh, personal um, or people support me every time. Every day I learn more about Arizona State University and Cronkite School. You have an amazing university and it's so wonderful to stay here. Uh, I hope after finish my scholarship program, uh, return here and I say my story after my uh, challenge. And I want to uh, say my story and share with you my knowledge. Thank you so much. Oh, so sorry. Uh, for me, it's a pleasure to introduce my friend and my future partner, <laughs> Johnson Majamba from Uganda. Thank you, Angela, for that great introduction. I bring you greetings from Uganda. My name is Johnson Mayamba. I'm a human rights journalist with over 10 years of experience. Ubuntu, Ubuntu, Gabant is an African phrase that stands for Ubuntu. Ubuntu simply means that I am because we are, and we are because I am. It is the unity, compassion, and kindness that makes us all human. Much as I knew that United States was the land of the free, and it is free indeed, I had stories of gun violence, racism, all stuck in my mind. These fears 
were not only in me, but also my friends and my family. They asked, how will you survive in such an individualistic country? You see, this is the danger of a single story that Chimamanda Ngozi talks about. We often hear and trust things that we read, watch and listen to and think that that is the whole truth. Unlike my people back at home, those fears have disappeared. Each day that comes, I never get tired of meeting random people who smile at me and say, hello. I am amazed by the strangers on the streets who just, say, who just wave as they walk. I'm also experiencing a new culture where I approach the door, somebody opens, holds it for me while smiling as I walk through. Wow. These are things that we don't see in the news. We only see that which the media wants us to believe. Unlike I was before, like I was before, I know you have also watched and believed some stories, especially the bad ones that, that depict Africa as a shithole continent. I would like to invite you that you visit Africa, especially Uganda, which is the pearl of Africa. You get to meet people who are very hospitable. You experience the cultures of our unique country. You also be free to enjoy our good climate, move around the country to enjoy the national parks that have thousands of wild animals. Indeed, as, human, as Hubert Humphrey once said, that the greatest gift of life is friendship. Indeed, I have, I have, I have received friends here. The professors I've interacted with never make me feel small. Even when I ask the silly question, they'll say, wow, that's a great question. It is fantastic to hear you say that. That is the uniqueness of the United States. Last month, I also interacted with a professor who, has, who had great memories and adventures of the world. Unfortunately, he had never been to Africa. He even asked me to show him where Uganda was on the map. Are you that professor? I hope you're not. As I conclude, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to Hubert Humphrey program for giving me this opportunity. We were over 200 Ugandans who applied for this program and only two were selected and I am a monk. I can't take that for granted. On that note, I'd like to take this singular honor and privilege to invite our leader, our director of the Hubert Humphrey Fellowship, Dr. Peter Moran. Thank you so much. Hi everyone. It's really um, an incredible pleasure to be here and a real honor. I'm gonna move back a little and take this off if that's okay. How do I follow what we just heard? There's really not much for me to say. It actually is um, a bit emotional for me. This is the first, uh, campus partner, we have 13 that we work with that I've had the opportunity to visit um, since I started as director of the Humphrey program about two years ago. And the reason I came here is really twofold. Number one, I was asked. <laughs> Number two, ASU has an amazing reputation and the reputation is well-deserved. When I come here, I was very warmly welcomed by everybody here. So I just want to thank the people who actually, more than me, more than the people in Washington, DC, make this program happen every day. So I would like to thank all of the global friends who are here and who have contributed 
and who take care of our fellows and introduce the United States to them. I'd like to thank the incredibly generous supporters like the Seversons who make this possible. I'd like to thank the academic mentors at Arizona State University because you are the sustaining and the guiding lights for all of our fellows who come here and you give of your time and of your experience. I also want to thank <laughs> someone who really needs to be thanked a lot every day, and that is Jan Holland Malcolm. Really, uh, the program couldn't run without her. I want to thank John Meisner, who is <laughs> professor of practice, brings incredible experience and knowledge, and also just a great attitude to working uh, for this program and supporting this program. I want to thank Dr. Marion uh, Bar Barrett, whose class I sat in yesterday. Um, amazing class, not an easy class. Case studies, I can see that the fellows are going to have to work, but she does a great job and she's a wonderful teacher. And then I'd like to thank the leadership here at the Cronkite School, Dr. Juan Mundel and Dean Batinto Batz. Most of all, today, uh, I arrived on Sunday, I leave tomorrow morning. Uh, it's been an incredible experience. I met with each of the fellows in groups of two to three. Um, I asked them to be direct with me. They were, they were great. And I have an even stronger feeling for this program than when I first heard about it uh, back in 1993, when I was a Fulbright fellow uh, working on my PhD dissertation in Nepal. And I later became uh, the director of the Fulbright Commission in Nepal, and I helped make the Humphrey program go from that side. That was when I really got to see the impact of Nepal is a small country. Three fellows, maybe two fellows come back every year. You think, well, it's not very many people in a country of 30 million. The impact is not to be believed. One person can make a difference, truly. And I know we heard today from many of our fellows, they work in really difficult places. And they are often at risk. And they've been through a lot to come here. So my uh, respect and my thanks to all of you. We believe in you and we want to support you. You are all on your own journeys here, but we are all in this together. And that's what the, an exchange uh, really means. We are all working together and I wanna continue to work with you during this program and after when you are alumni. I know that you're gonna be there for each other. You're already building that really strong network. So thank you for everything. Thank you to uh, Arizona State University. It's been a great visit and um, that's all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we have some light uh, snacks and beverages for you. Uh, and we thank you for attending today, and you're all invited back for the graduation ceremony, which will be, I think, the first week of May. Uh, and between now and then, we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to learn from each other. And thank you so much. Have a good evening.